So this is the third recording of a thank you everyone video for the thank you for the birthday blessings um, video to everyone who reached out um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, July 16th, right? Which was two, three weeks ago. Um, and the reason why this is the third <laughs> recording and it's going to be the last because I'm not changing anything is because I started talking about just a whole lot of things associated with people needing to be safe for real, right? <sighs> and I'm like, wait, but my intent was to say thank you to everyone um, for continuously praying for not just me, but others who we are traveling throughout the different parts of the states and to other countries, um, preaching the gospel um, in churches, as well as to people in different areas of business. And I realized that I cannot do a video without telling people to, they, people you, if you're going to be a Christian, if you say you're a Christian, but your life does not look like Christ, please stop saying you're a Christian. And yes, you can share this video with other people. This is not one of those videos where I'm going to be talking about where we're traveling to over the next couple of weeks outside of the country. Into This is a thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your birthday blessings and everything. At the same time, I'm sending this to individuals that I've met over the past couple of weeks um, where we either ran into each other, we met each other at the, the supermarket, um, at the car wash. Um, and I asked you when you said you're a Christian or you said you like my cross um, and you said, oh, you're a Christian too. And I'm like, oh, so how were you born again? And you look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is for you, actually, um, because here's the thing. You who proclaim to be in Christ, all of us who proclaim Christ is our Lord and Savior, right? How is it that we say that we are born again, but we can't explain what happened? Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying that anyone who's born again can explain like you, you, you receive Jesus and you're yes, but how can you say yes when you're dead? The Bible says that you are darkness. It doesn't say you're in darkness and your mind. I mean, if you can make your mind say, yeah. So that part, I'm not saying that we can explain, right? I, I've never met anyone who's received Jesus Christ who can explain exactly what happens, right? But I have met people and I am one of them who can tell you that the day that I received Jesus Christ, I was on an airplane. I'm not saying everybody needs to be on an airplane. I'm not saying everybody needs to see Jesus, hear Jesus, or just, yeah, that's not what I'm saying. But when I received Jesus on that airplane and I had that encounter where Jesus walked into my body and it was as if my head opened up and hot liquid honey flowed down my body. I, I didn't know that was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But what I do know is that when I got home, I stopped sleeping with my boyfriend. When I got home, I stopped cussing. When I got home, I called every single person, my Buddhist friends, my Muslim friends, my atheist friends, my friends who said they were Christians and was in church or church, right? Sleeping with people's husband and snorting cocaine. I called everyone and told them they did not received Jesus Christ. So my life was changed. I changed. So how is it that you say you received Jesus, but you can't explain what happened? You're like, oh, I, you know, I said the prayer when I was at youth camp. Okay. And you started crying. Okay. And your parents are pastors. Okay. But your life was not changed. But you keep saying that you are a Christian. And then you say you rededicated your life. Well, let me ask you a question. If you dedicated your life the first time and it didn't work, how is rededicating your life the second time going to work? Because the Bible is clear when we read John. Matter of fact, let's, let's just go to John 1. Let's just go to John 1. And I'm going to actually share this. So share the screen so there is no confusion as it relates to what the scriptures actually say. Because if I meet one more person 
who says that they're a pastor, a pastor who said, quote, well, I don't believe in all the Bible. Excuse, excuse me. Excuse, excuse me. What do you mean you don't believe in all of the Bible? What, what does that mean? You don't believe, not, and I'm not even talking about the sensationalist, which is, that's a whole nother. But you don't, you don't believe that Adam and Eve existed. And you don't believe that there was a garden. You don't believe that Eve existed, one. But if she did, that she didn't speak to a serpent. Like, you don't believe this, right? So this, for those who are like, okay, what's happening? Beverly, you haven't gotten an update in a while, but this is the update you get. Is because of conversations with people like that. So let me let me share the screen. So John 1 and 9, right? John 1 and 9, the true light that gives light to everyone comes into the world. That means there's a false light, right? I'm not sure where this the, the box is going to be on the screen, but that's fine. Gives true light, right? Okay, verse 10, he was in the world, Jesus, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. And I believe this is the New King James or the NIV, New King James version. Hold on, let me go to New King James. No, I'm not against the NIV. I'm not against any particular version, right? I, I, I read them all. The King James, the Greek, the Hebrew, just, okay, wait, let's, let's just focus, right? So verse 11, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. I'm not even gonna focus on that right now. Verse 12, but as many as received him, remember you received Jesus, not the, I'm gonna say a prayer and I believe with my heart and confess with my mouth and then I go sleep with my boyfriend. Or I confess with my mouth, I got goosebumps, I started crying, I'm a dude, and I'm going to go sleep with my boyfriend. No, okay. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Right? So you become a child of God when you receive Jesus. Not someone talked about Jesus, and you believe what they said. And you didn't receive him. You believed what someone said. Yes. Yes, I know the scripture. How can they believe unless someone is sent and tells them, right? Depending on the version that you read. But you still have to receive Jesus. But here's the thing. Verse 13, who were not born, who were born not of blood, meaning, and this is for my Korean, my Korean and other Asian people. You cannot be born again when you are born because you were born again in your mother's womb. That is false. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. That is false. You cannot be born again in your mother's womb because you use the scripture of when John the Baptist was in Elizabeth's womb and Elizabeth heard Mary's voice and the baby leaped in her belly. What you don't understand is that in Muslim nations, Islamic nations, that it is people are considered the religion of the father. So if the father is Muslim and follows Islam, then that means the children are born Muslim. So no, you cannot be born again, become a child of God in your mother's womb. Now, can God predestine? And he does predestine. I'm not going to get into that conversation I'm not even going to get into that. But you cannot be born, born again. Okay? Okay. Not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. You can't will yourself born again. Right? For my American westernized people, you come down the aisle because you want to give your life to the Lord. The Bible says you're dead. You have no life. Unless Jesus Christ comes and changes you and gives you life, you don't have a life to give Jesus. He says, I've come so that you may have life. So if he came for you to have, why am I yelling? Because this week, oh, this weekend, and over the past couple of weeks, I've met people in buildings with crosses on them who say they believe in Jesus. And it's a dude 
who believes in Jesus, male. But yet he says, but some days I feel like a woman and some days I don't feel like either. But Reba Kata, huh? What is happening? No one told you you're not born again. No one told you that you are an agent of Satan and you are deceived. I'm not calling you my brother and I'm not calling you my sister. This, the, oh. <laughs> okay. So, nor of the will of the flesh. How is a person born again? Okay, before we even get to that. Nor of the will of man. I cannot tell you you're born again. I can't tell you, say a prayer after me, and then I say you were born again. That is wrong. There are millions of people, and I've met hundreds, if not thousands of people here in the United States, where they say, oh, well, my pastor told me I was born again. Okay, but you still lying, cheating, fornicating, and you don't feel bad about nothing. Like, what? Like, what? How do you not feel bad about none of it? But yet, someone, your grandmama told you you born again, and your grandmama told you that you're going to be a pastor, or that you are, that you are a pastor. You just ain't walking in your calling yet. Uh, well, um, you gangbanging. And if you were to die because you done been banged, you go to hell. How do you say that you are a Christian and gang banging and slinging rock? Help me understand. And not for those who are gang banging and slinging rock and, uh, or, or you a male and you feel like a, um, sometimes you feel like a nut and sometimes you don't. Okay, forget about them. I'm talking about everybody who go to church Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, you on the choir, uh, choir rehearsal, uh, worship team rehearsal on Saturday. Then you go home and you sleep with your boyfriend. Sleep with, I'm coming after this perversion. Oh, you watch porn. Oh, no, excuse me, not porn. You watch children being raped. You watch women and boys, women and men being raped. You watch it. You get enjoyment out of it. And you go and you you sing worship songs Monday morning, uh, Sunday morning. Who are you worshiping? Now, let's make sure we're 100% clear. Can somebody be born again and be demonized? Absolutely. Absolutely. However, in Korean, hajiman. Huh? Grande, grande hajiman. However, every single person that I have ever met who is born again, where the enemy is tormenting them with sin, tormenting them and leading them, not leading, I mean, because you're supposed to be led, we're supposed to be led by the Holy Spirit, right? But tormenting them, they got rid of their TVs, their internet, their, they, they was like, we, they, they telling people pray, pray because the enemy got them bound. I'm not, I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about the one who says, Something comes over me and I can't see and hear. And the next thing I know, I don't beat my wife and children. I've met men like that where I'm like, okay, where's your family? They said they moved out the house in order to keep from almost killing their wife and children because they know they have a demon that needs to be cast out. I'm not talking about those people. I am talking about you who call yourselves a Christian and you mean and you nasty and you you don't you don't share the gospel with nobody and nothing in you wants to share the gospel come on man please and here's the crazy thing when i was in areas like Laos where people are literally being raped and beheaded in different parts of Asia, not just the Middle East, Asia, they ask me questions like, uh, why in America, in America church, you, you talk about love of God. Why do you preach this thing? That's what they're asking. Why, why do you preach about love of God? Why? Why are you always trying to get people understand love of God? And I'm like, oh, because they never received Jesus Christ. Simple. If you receive Jesus Christ, God himself, who stepped into your mortal body, because verse 13 says, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, 
born but of God. If you were born again of God, why does someone always have to keep encouraging you and telling you that God loves you? Why does someone always have to keep telling you, oh, you know, do right, be right, stay right, get right, stop doing that, put that down, stop cussing, stop drinking, stop. Why? It's because you never received Jesus. Come on, man. I know people don't, don't, don't make comments about the come on man person. Okay. I know people who used to sell children, sell babies, sex trafficking, and they have not just an encounter with Jesus, because you can have an encounter with the, with the supernatural. I know witches and warlocks who do things and people have supernatural encounters and they, people get the goosebumps and all of that. But these men and women used to sell people and they have an encounter with the resurrected Christ and they receive Jesus Christ. They receive the conviction of the Holy Spirit and their face changed, their eyes changed and they stopped selling babies. But yet you grew up in a Christian household. Uh -huh. Oh, your parents were pastors. Uh, as soon as I asked somebody, so tell me how you were born again. Well, my parents were, ah, no, 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 no. Tell me how you were born of God, born of spirit and water. Tell me how you received Jesus Christ. What happened? Two minutes, five, even five minutes, five minutes, not even two minutes. Give me five. Tell me what happened. I don't want to know where you were at because everyone before being born again was on their way to hell because we were, we, me, was agents of Satan. I had a Gucci bag, private driver, managing billions of dollars, billions of dollars. My boyfriend was fine. Oh, I was a good girl because I only was fornicating with one person. Just one where my friends was married, cheating on their husbands, male friends married, cheating on their wives. Okay, lying, cheating, doing all of that, lying, cheating, business and all of that. But we were not slinging rocks and we were not, you know, like the crack heads and the crack dealers we grew up with. So we're good. We're good. Beverly wasn't trying to be a hypocrite because I wasn't going to be up in church to sleep with my boyfriend because I had a grandmama who said, you know what? You're going to serve the Lord one day. I'm like, yeah, I ain't doing that. Yeah, I I no, because I, I, my life of sin was good. I had a private driver. I was first class being flown wherever. But I met Jesus on an airplane, 2004. And I knew that I knew that that was the son of God. And I knew that I knew that hell was real and the devil was real. Matter of fact, I knew the devil was real before I even had an encounter with Jesus Christ because of all the evil and wickedness I saw people do. Yes, this is a video to thank you all for your business. I promise you. And I promise you, I am not that. I am, I'm just the people, people, you, you either saved or you not people. Okay. How is it? Ladies, how are you walking in the church naked? Help me understand. Help me understand how you walking in the church naked. Cleavage all out. Because it's cold and it's summertime and your back and everything out, you, you got missiles showing. We all grown, so I'm just, I'm just saying. I remember sitting in a church and one of these mothers, uh, the church called this young lady over and was like, baby, it, it, take, take this and wrap it around yourself. If you're going to stay here today, just wrap this around so your behind ain't out. Why? We those mothers. Because watching over the past couple of weeks here in Georgia, D.C., Virginia, just, just different online how you have naked saying you you holy 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 who and your behind is out when you bend down or you start jumping and we can see your your draws now okay again i'm not talking about the women that are coming in who just came off the street. 
I'm not talking about them. I'm t I'm not talking about the the young women or even older women who just last week they were pen tripping, they were tricking, and then they like, can I come to church? Yeah, come on, come to church with me or even with others. And they come in the best thing that they have. And their, their cleavage is out and all of that. And they just happy to be saved. Or someone said, come with them, to, come with me to church. I'm not talking about them. And even them, when they come in, they start doing this. They just start feeling uncomfortable. Not because someone is staring at them. Not because someone is making them uncomfortable who's in the church. It is because the Holy Spirit is holy. I had women where they're like, why do I feel uncomfortable? I'm like, is there someone who's making you feel uncomfortable? They're like, I don't know. I just, I feel, I just feel. And I'm like, you know what? That is the conviction of the Holy Spirit because God made you in his image in your body. Even though you are selling your body or it is being sold, you know that it is holy and it is to be covered and kept for your husband. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the person who said, oh, I grew up in the household and I grew up in a, in a Christian home. And yet you, you hold your hands out and you want to go lay hands on people and we can see you wearing a thong. Put some clothes on. Please put some clothes on. I promise you this wasn't the intent of this video. I promise you. And to the guys, to the guys, why do we know what fruit of, is it fruit of looms, fruit of the looms? Why do we see your drawers? Why do you keep put, pulling up your pants? Because they keep, put on a belt. Why don't you have a belt? If you cannot afford a belt, I will buy you a belt. Why are your jeans so tight that we see the bulge in the beginning, in the front of you, in the front? Why is that? Why are you adjusting yourself while you are on the pulpit, on the praise and worship team. Somebody got to say this, y'all. Men, can you please talk to the brothers? Can you please talk? And I don't care if they're young or old. Please talk to them. Because everybody who knows me and other people in the churches that I have attended or visited or even in my home church, we're like, you know what, sis? Here, here's a jacket. And it's not about you making somebody lust or you know, you gonna lust, they gonna lust. They gonna do what they gonna do. But stop saying that you have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit and convicting you. When I got saved, the Holy Spirit was like, yo, je those jeans way too tight. You switching a little bit too much as you walk down the street. I'm not even walking in church. I'm in my office. And the Holy Spirit is like, no, no, you switching too much to go to the to, to the printer, to go to the copier. So again, I I promise, I promise this video was to thank y'all for the prayers over the past couple of weeks. This video, I know it's to all of you who's like, Beverly, what are you gonna send us an update? Um, of all the things that happened while you were in DC and meeting different apostles who came in from Nigeria and and it just oh, it, it was amazing because people love Jesus, right? They love Jesus. My prayer, my desire that does not supersede that of Christ, of God who says he desires that none shall perish but have everlasting life. That God who desires none shall perish but have everlasting life. He still knows people are going to go to hell and be without him. He still loves you because God is love, right? To all my, but God loves me. Yeah, but you're going to go to hell if you don't repent and receive Jesus Christ and be faithful until the end. Be faithful until the end, people. Over the past couple of weeks, there's been a couple of people who have died. A young mom with two of her young children both children under four years old, her and the two children in a car, a speed race, a, someone racing runs right into their Jeep. They're gone. Jeep explodes. They're gone. Her husband and her high school sweethearts split seconds. Her and husband, her, her husband's, her, her husband loses his family. Then there is an apostle who passed away where when I first came to Georgia, 
when I first came to Georgia in two Georgia in 2006, after being born again, 2004, and I walked into this church and one of the prophets of the house looks at me and says, baby, you see angels, don't you? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, and you don't know what to do, do you? I don't know. Like, oh. That apostle of that house that he and his wife started that church has gone on and he's home. And when I think about all the people that I have met who God has allowed me to either meet, be mentored by, to mentor, to be rebuked by, who love and loved God. And who made it a point that I wasn't going to be walking in no foolishness and told me to be right or get left and stay right or get left. That's the purpose of this video. Yes, it's a thank you for your prayers, for your love, for the prayers for the, the assignments for next week, leaving out to the Middle East next week. But my prayer for you all, for those who are born again, know that it is glorious when we walk knowing that we are walking in obedience to what God has called us to do, but more so in obedience to who he's called us to be. And that is representation of who he is here in the earth realm. Yes, to those who are like, okay, you go to church, touch, you go to church, right? But you're like, something's wrong. Something's not right. What's right is that you've been charged, but you haven't been born again. Because when you're born again, nothing's ever wrong. Can things go wrong? Things happen in your body. Things happen in your house. Things happen with our children. Uh, things happen with our spouses. Yes. But you're always okay. You're, everything is always okay. Why? Because God will get the glory. Because God will get the glory. For those who are saying that something's not wrong, receive Jesus. If, if, you, if you don't know for a fact that you've received Jesus, you didn't receive Jesus. For those who I've met over the past couple of months who looked at me and was like, I, I, that you said to me that you just, you straight witch and you like your crystals and your, you know, your, your, your um, new age books and your yoga and whatever. And you have gotten this far into this video, number one, Thank you, but my prayer and declaration that is every demon associated with the doors that you've opened into your life that keeps you where you say you want to be, may you receive the conviction of the Holy Spirit and be born again. Because running into you in the supermarket and then seeing you again on the other side of town in a restaurant where they sell food that I don't even like? Oh no, you gonna be born again. Oh no, no, yes, yes, you're gonna be born again. Oh no, you gonna serve Jesus. You gonna serve Jesus. And I will rejoice now before that even happens. And my prayer is that the devil doesn't take you out so you die in sin. How about that? I'm not praying God show you, show them how much you love them. No, you are breathing the air that God created in the lungs into the nostrils that God created, down into the esophagus, into the lungs, into your bronchi that he created, right? So we, I thank you, God, that you are not allowing the devil to kill them so they go to hell. How about that? That's what I'm praying for you, yeah? To all my family, friends, and coworkers, my desire is God's desire, which is that you shall not perish but have everlasting life. So when people ask, what did I want for my birthday souls, for my family members to be saved, for to be born again? Yes, family members, friends, coworkers, foes and frenemies. Well, actually I don't have frenemies because if you're an enemy, <laughs> what's up? You already know, I'm like, yo, you an agent of Satan, but you still calling. So we gonna just talk about Jesus. You know this, right? No, <laughs> y'all, please serve the Lord. 
And if you ain't going to serve him, stop claiming that you, you Christian. Can you, can you just stop that? Please. I'm asking. you. I, I can't remember where it's located, but he says that the he, heathens, depending on what version you're reading, NIV, New King James, but people there, it's Romans. I believe it's Romans chapter two, that the uh, non-believers blaspheme, blaspheme, blaspheme the name of God because of you. All these Bibles have in my house and I have one right here in front of me. All these, these people blaspheme the name of God because of you. For those of us who are born again, or rather for those who are running this race, and we know we died that day that we were born again and we just, we, we riding. We gonna ride until this, the, the wheels fall off, until Jesus comes back. Glory to God. Glory to God. But for those who are just trying to, to, to fake it until you make it, please stop. Please stop. Our meetings for next week will be held on um, starting, uh, with, well, I won't go through the, the countries. I'll do that in a separate call with everybody who needs to pray accordingly for where we're heading into next week. Know that you're loved. Again, the purpose of this video was to thank you for all the calls. But clearly, there was another purpose. Love you, and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye.